Hello, and welcome Inside the Void with me, Space Ghost, and today I have another special guest. Hey guys, cup of fun. Usually I talk about Boku no Hero, like, as it happens, like, as the episodes come out, but today we're gonna be talking about the classmates individually. It's exciting. I'm excited. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and the cup of fun. That's me, hi. Yeah, we we spent the past month or so just binging everything. It's all of it. Yeah, cause cause he has it. He he hasn't seen it before before now. So let's get into this. Uh, actually, before we get into this, warning: if you care anything about the students, their quirks, what they're like, also minor spoilers we might slip in here and there. There's police tape all over this episode, so so don't don't go past the police tape. Just stop right here. Past the tape is where murder happens. <laughs> so first is yeah, I'm gonna butcher everyone. Yoga Ayami Ayama. Ayama, he is the belly button dude. Belly button lancers. Let me see in my notes if I actually wrote down his actual quirk name. I think it's naval laser. Yeah, naval laser. Thanks. So he's interesting. Shiny, sparkly, fabulous. One of my favorite episodes was one of the filler episodes, per se, where you see everyone's rooms, almost everyone's bedrooms. And you see his bedroom, and it's just like mirrors and (laughs) shining. I think there's a pseudo armor in the corner. It's just beautiful. I'd love to assume that his favorite, like, music genre is just disco. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He is disco. (laughs) His power is pretty straightforward. He shoots a laser out of his belly button. Makes his tummy hurt if he does it too much. <laughs> the thing that interests me about him... We've talked about this before, like, just by ourselves. Hi, that's me. The thing that interests me the most is that you see a little bit about his childhood. Just a little snippet of it. And from that little snippet, I think it's fair to assume that he might not actually have a quirk. So, in this little flashback, it's him as a little kid crying with his parents... And he says the words, I just want to be like the other kids. And then another flashback of like Christmas or something, he opens a present and he gets that belt he's always wearing that like helps him. Does he ever explain the belt or does he just like to wear the belt? No, he just has it. He, he wears the belt around his waist and it helps him with his quirk or something. Me and Spacey Ghost here have the theory that he doesn't have a quirk. But his belt shoots a laser, so it's like he has a quirk, so he can try to fit in. We also haven't read the manga, and I know the manga is, like, light years away from, like, how it is in the anime right now. So watch we be completely wrong. Watch yeah. <laughs> watch we also, like, completely nail it on the head. It's exciting. Right now, I think the episode we left off on was called Rescue? It's in the middle of, like, the... Well, the hero proficiency exam. Yeah, where they get their licenses. The one before it's called Rush, and then I think it's Rescue or something. It's right when, um, spoilers, Boss Orca, is that his name? Mob yep. Orca? Bursts through the wall like, hey guys, I'm a villain. Try to rescue these guys while I'm here being a villain. Mm-hmm. So for context, that's exactly where we left off. Plus that one filler episode we don't count. Way to date this podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, should I have not done that? No, no, I'm kidding. Future Spacey Dimitri, edit this out. <laughs> it's still here. Uh, next is Mina Ashido. Uh, her quirk is acid. Acid. Just, just acid. It's just acid. Which originally I thought was pretty boring. You sh- acid, that's kind of like a, you can acid things. And I was very surprised and excited by the way she used it besides like throwing acid at people. Which is hard to be a hero when you just throw acid at people. I think I think her quirk has a lot of potential. Yeah, it's more versatile than I originally thought it would be. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it's fucking acid. Like, yeah. she could potentially kill someone with her quirk. Also a law of destruction, but the way she controls it and manifests it, the way she uses it to, like, ice skate almost, I think is really beautiful. Plus, she's a fun, interesting character. Mm-hmm. I think she ha- also has some, like... Now, now, this might be weird to hear because, as a character, she's usually, like, fun and outgoing and always supportive. But I also see, like, maybe even villain potential? I can see that. Her power is one suited for villain. Mm-hmm. It would work better for hurting people than helping people. That being said, it would be extremely useful for, like, rescue missions. She can, like, melt off debris and stuff or escalate. Also, uncanny thing that happens whenever I see her, I think about Homestuck. Yeah, she gives me so much vibes. Like when, um, I think her name was like 
uh, Calliope or something. Calliope? Yeah, Calliope, when she, like, makes her own fan troll yeah. persona. It reminds me of... I can't remember anyone's name. It's the water girl of Purple Blood. Feffery? Is that her? I mean, she has long hair, but... Well, if the trident... I just get, yeah, like, her Feffery. vibe from her. I don't know. I, I get it. I get it. They have, like, the kind of the same personality. I, I just see her, and I feel it. She's all, like, purpley, and... I love her, her outfit, her costume. <laughs> it's lovely. Next is... Suyo, um... Asui. Asui. Or Sue. Call me Sue. <laughs> or Froppy was her hero name. Mm, she's adorable. She is lovely and adorable. And again, I wasn't expecting much from her. In the, one of the animated X-Men, I was going to say the original, but that's probably not true. There was a character named Toad. Exact same powers. Mm-hmm. He was the butt of every joke in the comic relief character. Yeah, I remember him being, like, really gross, like, all the yeah. time. He was gross and disgusting, and he just, like, jumped around and stuff. In a world like X-Men, where everyone has these crazy powers to do things, he just like, hey guys, I'm here. And then there's Asui, who, on the other hand, is, like, saving people, and she's supportive, and she's, like, smart and thinks, like, strategies. And she uses her tongue very efficiently. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure a lot of people have already done that. Looks at Minata. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a really interesting thing, the tongue thing. Because, like, that's a very sensitive, vulnerable part of your body. I think, like, your mouth lip area has more nerve endings than anywhere else on your body. Except for some other exogenous zones we don't want to talk about. <laughs> so when she uses her tongue this way, first of all, she's tasting everything. When she pulls someone out of the way in the middle of a fight, she's tasting them. Covered in sweat and debris and grossness. Especially, especially um, Bakugo. Ah, uh, Yeah, uh, you don't want no. to like that. But also, like, it's just so sensitive. At one point, she actually gets her tongue cut, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that would hurt so much. She's a trooper. She's just always there. We don't deserve you, Sue. So. I'm curious, though. There's a few characters who I'm curious how they made it in. What's the name of the Academy? U Ultra? A Academy. I, I've heard what UA stands for. Regardless... Sue's one of the characters like, how do you pass the exam? The exam was killing robots. There's also the like the thing of saving people, but only two people did that. Mm-hmm. That was um Midoriya and uh, Uchiro. I I think it was her. Yeah. We have their names written down in front of us, but I'm not looking at them. Orjiro. Ura Raka. Ura Raka. Yeah, her. Those two are the only people who we like saw get points for saving people. So how did Sue destroy robots? Ah, the only thing I can think of is just something similar as, like, maybe the tape guy, like, using her tongue to, like, trip them down and, like, destroy them that way. It makes sense, but I don't know why I just look it back up. And also, how strong is her tongue? We've seen her lift quite a bit of weight with her tongue. I mean, quite a bit of weight, like, a, a grown man worth of weight with her tongue. So I'm curious how much she can, like, how strong is her tongue? I'm imagining now her, like, lifting weights with her tongue. You always see um, Deku sitting there with, like, um, always has a weight in his hand. He'll be reading a book and just, like, curling a weight. Just imagine her sitting there with her tongue just... Uh, uh. <laughs> Again, not out of context. Next is... Um, Tinya Ida. Good old Ida. Yeah. Engine legs. When I met Ida, I hated him. I think the first thing he did was stand up and yell at Midoriya for, like murmuring during a lecture or something talking during the, when they were explaining the entrance exam he just stood up and yelled at him and then I think he yelled at um the person talking to boss Mike is that his name um, something Mike oh present Mike present Mike he just yelled at him for some reason I forgot why like oh the security is gonna complain about everything and be a mess but no he's actually a very interesting dynamic character especially with spoilers his brother dying and him like trying to be the hero after Stain's like you're selfish and you're just getting revenge. He's interesting and dynamic. I'm interested to see where that goes. I really like his whole, like, character development of him taking on his brother's hero name. Yeah. But at the same time, I've... Well, we've been seeing this pattern of Ida always being, like, one step behind everyone else. Yeah. Like, he's always one step behind Midoriya and Shoto and even even Bakako, maybe... And it's like, I, I just want one time where he breaks through. Especially, like, the relay race. I feel like he should have, like, won that race. Oh, like, yeah. His power was, like, made for that race. 
But I don't know. He just kind of fell flat. I don't think it's, there's so many characters introduced during that race that, like, they set him aside because, like, there's 20 characters from Class A and 20 characters from Class B, plus all the support students. And, and the business students. Don't forget the business students. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget the business students. Also, on that brief tangent, all the finalists of the sports festival, I think there's three years worth of students who yeah. competed. Only Class A students or rather, only first-year students made it in there. I found that really shocking that no second or third years made it. Yeah, me too. Like, at least one of them has to, had to have. I mean, I understand the meta standpoint of, like, oh, we only care about these students. They're the main characters-ish, but still. Like, even past, like, the relay race, I don't think anyone made it to the Calvary battle that wasn't Class A or Class B, except for the one support girl. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Ida, his powers... They kind of like, oh, engine legs. And then I saw him, I'm like, oh, engine legs. <laughs> yeah, I got this. I'm behind this. Mm. I like his, um, Ibrium burst. Uh, recipuum Recipium burst. burst. Yeah, that thing. I really enjoy that idea of, like, here's everything I got for the next ten seconds. That's cool and interesting and adds another level to his character where you have to, like, actually think about and It's not like, I go fast and I'm going to keep going fast. It's like, I can go fast and I can go really fast for a while, but at what cost? Mm. Where will I be in 10 seconds? I also really like, um, I'm not sure if they've actually utilized this, but I would like to see him use, like, the fire that comes out of his engines to his advantage, too. Maybe against, um, Dark Shadow Guy. Tsukuyami? Yeah. Tokuyami. Tokuyami. Maybe that has some effect there? Mm. I also would love to see him use his engines to blow up balloons. It's like <laughs> in this fuller episode, it'd be great. Yes, yes. His costume is interesting to me. It's, like, the split image of his brother's. He is, like, so much form-fitting into his brother, like, it's interesting to look at it that way. Next is Ochiro Ukuraka? Ochako. Ochako. Yeah. Uh, gravity, or your gravity? Your gravity's her hero name. Yeah, her quirk is zero gravity, which I think is an underused superpower. I saw, I'm like, oh, that's kind of like, okay, she can make things float. And then they explained it, like, oh, that's not making things float, that's very interesting and fun. She is interesting to me, because the idea of zero gravity... So, the equation for force, I think, is, like, speed times mass or whatever. And the idea of, like, making something weigh nothing, moving it, it'll go fast because it weighs nothing so it's easy to move, and then giving it its weight back in that instant would cause so much force to happen. She could do a ton of damage. Mm. So I think she could utilize that in a bunch of interesting ways she hasn't yet. And she's already done a bunch of interesting things with her power, especially after gaining the, um, gun face kung fu... Gun Gunhead? Head. Gunhead. Guys, I'm horrible at names. I'm so sorry. <laughs> In this podcast, we butcher every name. <laughs> the butcher cast. <laughs> uh, I do really love um, when she uses it to like make really heavy things float up, and mm. then they just crash down using their own weight to like her own advantage. My favorite use of her power so far is when she worked with Tape Guy, which you'll look at his name when we talk about him. Hmm. Um, and used her power to make a bunch of rocks float with tape on them and then drop them and caught everyone in, like, a web of tape using the rocks as anchors. That was, like, the most beautiful, ingenious way to use her power. I think, um, my favorite time would have to be when she's fighting, um, Bakugo. Mm. And she's just using his destructive nature to, like, let the deb debris float. Is that was a really great fight. I remember saying they're thinking about, like, all the things that like, she can do that, no, that wouldn't work. There's always, like... The thought before the fight happens, where you yourself think, how can they do this? There's this, this, and this. And then they do some, like, third completely random thing you never thought of. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you can do that. Okay. The thing is, the whole idea was if she could touch Bakugo, she could win. But I don't think so. Because he could just use his explosions to propel himself while having zero gravity. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like in that fight, in those circumstances, there is no way she could have won that fight. Maybe after her gun had kung fu she could have but during the sports festival i feel like there was no physical way she could have lost or i mean could have won, won i mean i'm sorry yeah i do also appreciate just her as a character how she has just this thing about beating shit up mm -hmm. yeah I, I love seeing that fire especially for the typical love interest kind of slot they put her she's in. the cutesy girl and i love that they put her in that love interest slot but it's a very minor thing about her character mm-hmm it's becoming more and more, like, of a obsession over her character at this point. But, like, in the beginning, it was just like, oh, no, I don't like him. No, of course not. Ah. It's just my friend. We're good friends. And it's adorable how, like, they met in the beginning and the, how the relationship has grown. Though it really bothers me 
where they have this thing like, oh, I talked to a boy. Oh, I talked to a girl. You're doing it all the time. It's yeah. just one particular instance where you spoke and you're like, I did it. I got nervous and I did it. Mm-hmm. And that kind of bugged me. Yeah, me too. But yeah, she is really great. She's adorable. She's powerful. I can't wait to see how she grows. Her quirk's one of those quirks where there's a lot of room for creativity in it. Some things are pretty straightforward. Tape guy makes tape. He can do stuff with his tape, but at the end of the day, he just makes tape. But, like, zero gravity can do so many things. Actually, tape guy was a bad example. Tape is very versatile. Mm-hmm. We can do a ton of things. Some quirks are very one-sided and can't really do much. And then there's quirks like hers where you can do so many things with it. Mm-hmm. And then you put her in a group setting, and then there's even more she can do. I think she really thrives in a rescue or group scenario. Oh, yeah, definitely. So next on our list, Mashiro Orjiro. I, I think that's right, yeah. Orjiro. This guy, complete unknown to me. Like, to this point, he said maybe ten words. He hasn't done anything much of note. I take that back as I say it. But for the whole, like, first two seasons, he's quietly in the background. Mm. I even had to ask um, Spacey Ghost, like, hey... Who's this guy who's in the background of every shot of Class A? What, what's going on? His power is he can talk to animals, not control them, but oh. just talk to them. No, 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 no. You're thinking of someone else. This guy is, um... Oh, I'm completely wrong about everything. I saw the word animal in my notes and thought it was him. He has the animal tail. That's it. <laughs> he, has, he has a tail. It's like a lion tail, but it's fat. Talking about um, quirks that do one thing, and like, oh, well, that's your quirk. Animal tail is the perfect example of that. He has an animal tail. I mean, it's useful for, like, swinging around. It's useful. It has, like, mobility. It's stronger than his arms, it appears. But it, it's just an animal tail. Yeah. It's weird. It's like kind of an awkward spot. Like, he has his back covered by the tail, but he has to, like, look behind him, and then he can't see in front of him. Him as a character, he's a pretty interesting guy. Right now, we're at the part where they're making their own special moves and stuff. What 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 can he do that he hasn't already done? I forgot about that, and I'm wondering, like, what did he do during that time? Yeah, I don't remember seeing him train or anything. I remember Phantom. I think his name was Phantom. The the teacher who multiplies. I think it's Phantom, yeah. Um, him saying, you rely too much on using your tail. Try to think, like, as an accessory as opposed to your only trick or something like that. And that's really all we saw about that. I'm wondering if, like, there's going to be, like, a part in the episode coming up where it's like, oh my, look at him completely solve, like, everything. For me, he is the biggest underdog of Class A. Like, his power seems to have the least amount of use to me. To make up for that, though, he's pretty physically fit and trained, so he can take care of himself. But in a world of giants, he is a small man. Oh, yeah. Where people are shooting lasers and growing 20 feet tall and doing so many crazy things. He just has a tail. It's just kind of flat by comparison. I had a thought. So there's a guy who can talk to animals. He has animal tail. Can you talk to his tail? <laughs> just a weird thought. Um, next is... Denki Ka- Kamimari. I love... So Dimitri made a cheat sheet for me. Space Ghost made a cheat sheet for me that has, like, everyone's names and powers, because I'm horrible at names. I, I go by powers or appearance. Like, mm-hmm. oh, the guy with that hair. He made me a cheat sheet, and for power, he wrote down the word Pikachu. I mean, that's what he is. Like, even his hair has, like, the little Pikachu stripe in it. I would make him more Pichu as of post Pikachu. Oh my god, you're right. Because Pichu is like, we're talking about Pokemon now, guys. <laughs> Pichu can't, like, control the electricity and hurts himself sometimes. But anyways, he is extremely interesting to me. This guy is a powerhouse. The things he can do. And he has that interesting limiter that after so much energy, he just becomes an idiot, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it's like he pretty much short-circuits himself. But it's great. I love characters who are dynamic and have, like, a weakness. It creates, like, interest. When a fight scene happens, here's my limits. How do I get around them? What do I do? That's interesting besides, I run up and punch the guy. It doesn't work. I punch the guy harder. Which is partly why I'm not a big fan of All Might, because its strategy is punch the thing and then punch it harder. Mm Mm-hmm. With adding a country to it. But we're not talking about All Might right now. We're talking about this gentleman, Pikachu Man. <laughs> um, Later, recently, very recently, where we are, we saw him th- get a new item to help focus his electricity. He has a lot of power, but he can't aim it. So it's either a big circle around him, or he has to touch someone. He gets this, like, dual disc looking thing on his arm that, like, shoots up these little things that, like, conduct his electricity. So he can, like, aim and arc it around. Which is great. I'm curious why he's not just learning how to control his power. 
I get a very slacker vibe from him. Like, he's good enough to get by, and he just gets by and that's enough. Him controlling his power would be devastating. That's a very strong and useful power that can do many f- things. Offensively, defensively, also just, like, utility-wise of powering things. He was, like, transmitting radio signals at one point. I think so, yeah. During the USJ, he was trying to transmit or something like that. So, he has a very interesting power, and I can't wait to see him develop. Each character is having, like, their own individual development arc as it's going on. And he is one of them that I cannot wait to see his. Yeah, me too. Anything else on that topic? Um, I do have one other thing, but I'm going to talk about it when we talk about a different character, so... Is is it the thing about, about his relationship with Bakugo? No. Okay. So he has this weird relationship with Bakugo. Only two characters kind of, like, get along. There's air quotes there. You can't see them because that's a podcast. With Bakugo. And that is, um... Metal Guy. Or Stone Guy. Let me find his name he, real he's, quick. We're, he, we're talking about him next. Oh, he's next. Yeah, he's uh, next. Yiro? Um, Ijiro, Ijiro Hiroshima. Thank you, names, man. I'm going to read him. Him... And then Pikachu Man over here are the only people who kind of get along with Bakugo. More so Jiro, but lately he's been tagging along with Bakugo and kind of growing as a friend, air quotes again with Bakugo, because friendship for him is a weird thing to say. <laughs> I'm curious how that's going to grow. Those three as a pair. That's a trio group. Just thoughts. Next, we just said his name. Jiro. Kirishima. Kirishima. Thank you. He gets rock hard, man. <laughs> he's interesting. He's one of the only characters, one of the five, who did not pass the um, year one exam, or is it... The midterms. The midterms. He didn't pass the midterms. He has a very interesting power, which again, I thought, oh, he gets hard. That's boring. Mm -hmm. But the ways I've seen him use it and implement it are interesting. I didn't think about him becoming bulletproof. He doesn't do that. So there's another character. I think his name is Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Yes. Which is a great name. The one name we remember. He has, I mean, it's the same name five times. It's great. And they say it all the time. Mm-hmm. Just nail it into you. Tetsu, Tetsu. He has almost the same power. This guy gets rock hard. Tetsu, Tetsu gets um, metal hard. I'm curious if Tetsu, Tetsu will ever surpass him because metal is stronger than rock in theory. Once it's forged and all that stuff. I think with Kirishima, we have seen him like tear through metal though. Yeah, it's a weird thing to say rock hard versus metal hard. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's interesting. Again, one of Bakugo's only friends. I, I, I low-key ship them. Interesting. Okay. Um, I don't see shipping Bakugo. Just because, like, he's in love with anger. I also low-key ship Bakugo with, with Uraraka. Interesting. I can see something there. But anything with Bakugo is, like, um the Bulma Vegeta thing. Like, wait, how'd that happen? <laughs> but that's a different anime entirely. Yeah. Talking about every anime here. But I'm waiting to see how he grows. He failed because he can't maintain his power for a long time. He's not the smartest individual. Oh, no. He's a run forward and hit it. If it's still standing, hit it again. And I'm curious to see how he grows and improves because he failed because of that mentality. And he's taking he was taking extra classes until all the stuff at the summer camp happened. So I'm curious if he grows and learns from that or if he falls back down into like that support role, which he seems to be taking with Bakugo right now. Right now he seems to be Bakugo's, like, right-hand dude. Yeah, with all this training, because he does have a stamina limit that we talked about, I wonder, like, if just all his training is just like, oh, how long can I go about this? Because I don't really see him getting, like, any tougher. Yeah. Harder is not the thing. Something spoiled to me. He does get harder at some point. Ah. I'm sorry I told you that. No, it's okay. I don't know context. It's fine. Um, he gets harder, guys. <laughs> Harder with Bakugo, ooh. <laughs> I'll talk about that. Where's my train of thought? Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, his his limit is what's limiting him. Oh yeah, my idea on limits. So I think a character with no limits, no weakness, is boring. I don't like Superman. I don't like Batman for those reasons. Because they just, like, win. That's the thing. I also don't like harem protagonists for that reason. <laughs> exactly. Which I'm very happy this didn't devolve to that. I'm happy that there's a love interest and not an option of like, here's all the girls in class A. Take your pick, Midoriya. Oh, they're all in love with you? What? No, no, I hate those. The idea of limits. If something is too strong, it's boring. One Punch Man, it's all about being too strong and boring, which makes it interesting. But if the limit is too low, then it's also boring. Like, Sugar Rush Guy, I think his max is, like, three minutes. Did they say that one one? I think so, yeah. 
I think that's boring. He's useful for three minutes, and then he's wasted. And he also failed because of that. But I think if, like, the limit is too great, it's boring. But if it's too, like, there's no limit, also boring. There's that fine limit line. And I'll talk about this a little bit more with a few other characters. Because for me, in My Hero Academia... The limits are what help define the characters for me. What they can and cannot do and how they push those limits. Also, the first time I saw my um, Baka no Hero, during the opening scene, you see um, Ujiro, and I thought he was Ichigo, because he has like (laughs) the red-orange hair and it just flashed right really quick. I'm like, wait, hold on, is that Ichigo? What's happening? Next is um, Koji Koda. Yeah, he's the animal-speaking guy. He's the animal-speaking guy. And he's on the list of people where I say, how did you pass the entrance exam? I, I honestly could easily see it, because he can talk to any animals. I believe his charisma with animals is, like, stupid high. Like, they're just willing to do whatever No animals wants. have said no to him yet. But you don't see, like, a huge flock of birds swarming down and killing robots, if a bird could kill a robot even. So I'm curious what he did to pass that entrance exam. That's another good point. His powers and other powers, where originally I was like, oh, he can talk to animals. But as it goes on, it grows, I can see... Hey, 5,000 pigeons, come and help me. Or things like that. He seems very niche and useless in most situations. But when he gets a chance to shine, he is a diamond man. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine if he he was doing a villain battle that just happened to be right next to a zoo. Oh, he would rock a zoo. Rock a zoo <laughs> or like in the woods, just like, hey, everything, come on out here. Hey, bears and like deer and whatnot, but just, just come to me, be my friend. Destroy this monster. What did he do for the summer camp training? What was his training? His training um, was just to be more confident and talk louder. Okay, he took public speaking, that's right. Yeah, yeah, just to, like, increase his range and gotcha. stuff. I wonder if he gets something like a um, direct mic. I keep thinking that guy's name. <laughs> present mic? Present mic. Like, something like... I guess the present mic speaker is to aim his voice. Yeah. But it's something like to amplify himself. After the training, the last set of training, before the hero exams, he got a duck mask. I don't know what the point of the dusk, duck mask was, but he has a duck mask now. I'm curious if that has anything to do with what I just said. Ooh, I wonder. We are a bit behind on episodes because subs and dubs are a little bit different. So so maybe we see him use it at, at Possibly. some point. He, at this point, is kind of boring to me because he hasn't done anything of great value. He's done, like, two or three key moments. But he doesn't talk at all, so he hasn't been developed very much. He's just kind of flat to me as of now. But I see great potential. I can't wait for his own little arc to happen. Yeah, same. Next is Rikido Sato. I do not like this character. She can convert, um, I think it's the the proteins, the amino acids in her body into stuff. No, no, that's the dude. I saw converts. Guys, I need to read these notes all the way. Yeah, his quirk is Sugar Rush. He, he um, eats sugar, gets stronger. Like I said, his, I think his limit was like three minutes. Mm-hmm. He also failed the um, midterms. Yeah, the midterms. He is, of all of them, the flattest to me. We talked about limits. He hits things. Hitting things is boring unless you do it interesting, like Midoriya does. However, he has a big, a huge limit because of his sugar rush. So what I find is already a boring thing becomes even more boring with that. Plus, he just gets stronger the more he eats. He can't just keep having, like, sugar and food on him. Yeah. Though, when he got developed a little bit, when we saw his room and we found out he was bacon, he gained more personality. To that point, he was mostly a background character. He was just like Animal Talk Dude. He was just kind of in the back, like, who's this guy in the back? I mean, I didn't, like, oh, he has muscles. He must be strong. Mm-hmm. Next. But I want to talk more with him, the characters to interact with him, to see more about him. As of now, is this one's the underdog of Class A? Um, no, Animal Tail. Animal Tail is the underdog of Class A. I take it back. This guy. Yeah, like, if we see more of his personality, then then yeah, go for it. But as for just based on quirks alone, like, no. <laughs> He's, like, on the bottom for me. He so, so, for the entrance exam, do you think he spent three minutes punching things and just took a nap? And just hoped that was enough points? Probably. If he, if he strategized right, I could see it. But the thing is, he's not also a strategy person. He also fails his midterm because his plan was eat sugar, run forward. And it just didn't work out for him. So, I, yeah, he seems of class A the flattest character until I find someone else later in this list. 
But as of now, I'm pretty sure he's definitively, like, the least interesting to me. Next is Mizo Shoji. He is extremely interesting to me. He's more of, like, a stealth type person, stealth type quirk. He's a situational niche kind of person. And originally I saw him like, oh, he has six arms and he can, like, grow an extra mouth and some eyeballs. Okay. But as he goes and progresses, and you can see the utility and all the cool things he can do, making more arms on his arms that regenerate, scouting, listening. He is very useful, useful, very versatile. Um, During the um Calvary game, Calvary, yeah. during the sports festival, he, like, made a little, like, nest cocoon for um Mr. Modena. Minata, Minata and uh, Sue. He made a little, like, dome for them, and there's so many interesting things he can do. I want to see more of him. Also, I did see concept art, and according to the concept art, he does have a mouth. It looks freaky. I was going to bring it up. Does he have a mouth? He's always wearing a face mask. He has Kakashi syndrome. Another anime mentioned. That's interesting, That Yeah, he's one of them that hasn't yet to be developed yet. Because there's 20 characters and they can't develop them all at once, especially when there's a main character. Mm. But I cannot wait to see more from this man. Me neither. Also, I really like his costume. It works well with him. Ooh. Next is um, Kayoka Jiro. Yeah, earphone jack. So her earlobes are ear jack, like ear bud ports, and she can like plug them into her legs for sonic booms or like put them in walls and stuff to listen. I was kind of underwhelmed at her at first. I thought her power was kind of dumb. But then as I see it and understand it more, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. I see a lot of potential with her. Like, I feel like with her quirk, she could, like, using their own, like, heartbeats, maybe even, like, completely destroy, like, other people's eardrums just on her vibrations alone. Sound is a powerful thing, but it's hard to, like, control and aim. And she has built an aim with, like, her leg speaker things going on. Whereas present Mike does not I remember his name this time. Mm. He has to have that speaker built in or in his costume to help aim. I'm going to see where she goes. I've seen her use her ears to fight. Mm-hmm. Like another appendage. Again, yet to be developed. She has an interesting family. We've seen her family. <laughs> Rocker household. I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. But so far, she's kind of... You know, she doesn't do much. She doesn't get very far in many things. You do see her during the midterm work with Creation Girl. We'll talk about it in a minute. Create a giant speaker and plug into that and just destroy. But I see her being more as a supportive, sidekicky kind of oh yeah scouting person as opposed to an All Might or an Endeavor. Mm-hmm. Also, with what I was mention- mentioning earlier, I could see her and Denki totally teaming up and like dealing a lot of damage. During the USJ attack, those two do end up together along with Creation Girl. Momo, what's her name, Momo? Momo, yeah. Mo- her, them of Momo. And they did some interesting things like that, like you were talking about. And I think those three together are a really good group. I'd like to see more from them. Yeah, yeah. There's always the fun of, like, talking about the character and their quirk. And then there's the fun of talking about the character and their quirk mixed with this character and their quirk. Mm-hmm. Like, you have the combinations and so many interesting things can happen. Like, imagine how fast Bakugo would go if he weighed nothing. He could just, like, boop, boop, yeah. boop, boop, propel himself. So next is um, Hantos Hero. Yeah, tape. Tape elbows. I saw this guy and I laughed. I physically laughed out loud. This guy's not going anywhere. He shoots tape out of his elbows. And then he passed the entrance exam and made it to class 1A. And then you see him do all these things. I'm like, huh, interesting. It's almost like a Spider-Man. Yeah, like, I I put down in my notes that if Ciro and Sue, like, had a kid together... Basically Spider-Man. Amazing. Ra- imagine raising that child. It'd be like climbing <laughs> on walls and like its tongue goes this way and its tape goes that way. And it'd, be, it'd be a mess. It'd be... Mm-hmm. It'd be a handful. But he is interesting. Again, yet to be developed. Interesting costume. I love that his mask has like teeth in the front of it. Like the part of the tape that you used to tear off the piece. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, the front of his, his mask has like teeth. Like the front of the tape dispenser. Yeah, that's, that's lovely. Yeah, it's a little silly thing. I love how, even though his quirk isn't as good as the others, he doesn't let that get to him. Yeah. He's just like, yep, I'm the tape guy, this is my thing. I physically, I laughed at him. I don't, like, physically laugh at things all the time, but, like, he, tape? Really? Sure. (laughs) The questions that came into my mind were, like, the durability, and a bunch of, like, other factors, like, the strength of it, how far he can make it go. I said durability and strength. (laughs) 
And he's proving himself to be much more interesting and useful than I thought he would be. Um, another question I have is, like, so, Eraserhead. Sure. He has that, like, bounding... I don't even know what it is. Like, the restra- it's tape. Restraining tape. It's tape? Yeah. Okay. I wonder if it's just as strong as that. Yeah, I'm curious about that. It's tape in the sense of, like, police caution tape. Eraserhead's tape. As opposed to Euro's actual sticky tape. So he'd be really interesting, really useful for um, capturing things, capturing oh, yeah. people, mm-hmm. laying traps. I see a lot of us truly coming out of this man in the future. Me he likes too. the way he goes. Next is one of my favorite characters. Fumikaji Tokoyami. Possessed um, bird. I think it, his thing is called Dark Shadow. Yeah, it is Dark Shadow. And I love... I talked about limits and how I feel about them. He has the best limits. I love the idea of I can get stupid strong. But the stronger I am, like, the crazier things get, and I can't control my shadow, and just, oh. He's interesting. He's a bird man, which I thought was weird. I got over the bird manness. <laughs> he was the most obscure-looking character in Class 1A, I think. Yeah, other than um, the Dupla arms guy. Oh, yeah, I forgot about his arms. But, like, even him, like, he's, like, a humanoid guy. He has some extra arms. I got over that pretty fast. Mina shoots acid. She's, like, pink and has horns. I think she has, like, little yeah. antlers. Yeah. Cool, but she's still like a humanoid shape. This guy, just... <laughs> just bird. Uh, bird head. He's just a bird. But no, he's interesting. He is smart. His quirk is versatile, useful. I love the idea of using the shadows and how the light actually affects him. Mm-hmm. And that like at night or in the darkness, he's so much more powerful. But like, if he gets too powerful, then he can't control the shadow. And it's really interesting to me, the things he can do. I also like, uh, with his new special ability, how he just like kind of... Let Stark Shadow, like, cover him. Yeah, I love that. He ha- So his biggest weakness was that he used his quirk exclusively. He could not fight, like, physically. But now he has, like, shadow armor from his quirk, and it's lovely and beautiful, and I can't wait to see him use it. Also, what intrigues me with him is that his quirk is less of a quirk. He's just literally possessed by some other spirit. Yeah, there's, like, a shadow demon in his body. So it brings the question, like... Are we going to deal with, like, different dimensional shit later on? And I have the question of, why is he a bird? I, I did see um, something on Tumblr where someone's like, watch his parents just be regular humans. I, I want, Yeah, I was going to bring that up next. What does his parents look like? Is there a demon and a bird and that's how he was made? I don't know. Are they cultists? <laughs> did they sacrifice their child to summon this demon? You see a good chunk of of families. You see a lot of their families when all the teachers have to go through and like convince them to come and live on campus. He's one of the families you don't get to see. It makes me sad. I was looking forward to that. I kind of envision him as not having a family. Um. Like, either, like, off by himself, because he's, in my opinion, one of the most mature members of Class 1A. Oh, yeah. Either off by himself already, or just, like, he's an orphan or something. Maybe one night it got dark and his shadow, like, messed up his parents. Aww. Maybe that's how I found out he had his power. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We've yet to hear his backstory yet, but he's been developed decently without a backstory. So I can't wait to hear more from him also. Also, you bring up parents. Like, if he has bird parents, what if, like, as a small infant, they're like, go on, out of the nest. Leave the nest, <laughs> out. Because the principal of the school, he's a rat. Or a mouse. Or a dog. We don't know. <laughs> no, no. They said he's either a rat, he's a lab rat with a quirk to make him more like a human. As opposed to a human with a quirk to make him more like a rat. He reminds me of Excalibur from Soul Eater. Oh That's my another God, anime right. reference. When I saw him, I immediately thought, yep, here's this guy. And then you saw him during the midterms, and like, oh yeah, look at that. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was almost unfair. Like, those guys were destined to fail. Oh yeah. Acid Girl and was it Shot Guy? Um, Pikachu Man? Pikachu Man. They were yeah. the team. Those are the other two who failed, along with Tape Guy. Tape Guy also failed. Mm-hmm. But he failed because he sacrificed himself to help him. I don't know. To- Todoroki. Todoroki. I know that guy. I just read his name and... <laughs> Man, I have so many feelings about this gentleman. Man. This is a podcast in itself. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So his quirk is um, one half hot, one half cold, which for the record is two quirks, and it makes me so upset. (laughs) His family background makes me so upset. He is Prince Zuko, basically. I think Mm -hmm. my notes, Dimitri wrote down, I see hot Zuko, yeah. Literally just his existence is like, oh, his dad's the number two hero and he wanted to birth the number one hero. So he just like kept having children on top of children until he got like the perfect Breeding for it. 
And he doesn't even call him his son. He calls him my masterpiece. <sighs> a lot of issues bundle up in this man, who is extremely powerful. This guy's powers... Back to my talk about limits. So his only limits are psychological. If he uses his ice side too much, he freezes over. If he uses his fire side too much, he overheats. But because he has both sides, he can just keep himself, like, regulated. His only other limit is his, like, his daddy issues. And guess what? He took care of those. Mm-hmm. So, um, he has, like, his weaknesses now are, like, physical limitations. His lack of, like, physical, like, strength. He doesn't fight. He uses his quirk almost exclusively. But still, he is stupid powerful. And I'm sure as he grows, he's gonna surpass Endeavor infinitely. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see a scene of those two fighting. Also, talk about Endeavor for a minute, because we're kind of on that topic. His quirk is Hellfire. It's not fire. It's not hot like his son. His quirk is Hellfire. I get a kind of an evil vibe from him. Like, Oh, yeah, especially He's a with, hero like, for all the wrong reasons. The fire mustache going on. Even before you find out he's, like, a horrible parent who does horrible things to his kids, like... Hold on, I'm looking up Endeavor because I want to see what exactly his quirk is. It is Hellfire. Well, yeah, but, like, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. Is my question. You don't see very much. You know he has a limit. He mentioned that I'm going to use up all my power on these guys. He seems to have very good control over it. Kind of destructive. I remember seeing him at one point in a chase scene running up the side of a wall by burning holes in the wall with his feet as he's going up the side of the wall. Oh, it just says... He's just able to produce and manipulate fire fire at will. Yeah. That, that, that's boring. I don't know why he's number two. I feel like there's more interesting heroes. I guess brute power and strength is his only, like, what brings him up. Like, he is ripped. Like, he's a big man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm assuming he has some strength behind him, where his son uses, like, exclusively his quirk, and that's a big issue for him, his weakness. Him, on the other hand, he's almost as big as All Might. He's bigger than All Might, I think, even. Mm-hmm. He's ripped. I feel like at some point, this is like an obvious direction he's going to go in. Like, the moment he starts to use his quirk, like, both of his quirks at the exact same time, Mm -hmm. then it's just over. It's done. Yeah, he is the makings of an OP stupid... It was a fighting game. He used a character everyone would pick, and they're just stunlock and stupid. Oh, someone talk about his costume. Is it just his gym uniform? I'm pretty sure it is. His costume, I think, is just his gym uniform. I feel like he doesn't care about being a hero. Like, yeah, he wants to help people and stuff, but, like, he's there because his dad made him. He didn't take the exam. He just showed up. His hero name was just his name. Mm -hmm. His costume is his gym uniform. He is, like, putting the least amount of effort possible into, like, being a hero. The fun stuff of making your name and your costume. No. I mean... It makes sense because his father is pretty much forcing him to go to school and stuff. Yeah, he's very straight edge in that regard. Next is Toro... Hagakure? Hagakure? Yeah, Invisible Girl. I love her. She is yet to be anything but comic relief to me, but I love her. Like what we were saying earlier, like, how did she defeat those robots? She is on that list of, like, how'd she get by? I don't know. How'd they even watch her take the exam? Yeah, because she could just take off her, like, gloves and... Maybe she rescued someone? Maybe. She was in a different group, I believe. Mm-hmm. I have no clue if she was there or not. She could have been there. <laughs> we didn't see her. I love how everything's just assumption. Like, oh, yep, she was there. Totally. Comic relief, you see a pair of gloves show up. Mm. I think one time accidentally um, erased her head, elbows her in the boob. And she starts like, <laughs> you perfect, I, I can't see you, I'm sorry. It was pretty funny. One of the few times you see him break, like... Mm. His serious facade is during that. I think there was one time when she was teamed up with the animal tail guy. And she's like, I'm going to take off my clothes. Don't look. And he's like, where would I be looking? <laughs> I think during the USJ event, there's a time where, like, um, she just says something. I'm like, when do you get here? I've been here the whole time fighting with you guys. Haven't you noticed? <laughs> Absolutely no development for this character. She is just comic relief. And I'm happy with that. I'd love to see more about her, though. Yeah, yeah. What's her special move? What would it be? Like, she's already invisible. I become more invisible. <laughs> maybe maybe if she could extend her invisibility to others? That's an interesting thought. Through her sweat? <laughs> yes, exclusively through her sweat. I can't wait to see how they progress her if they can progress her. Mm-hmm. Right now she's pretty flat, but they're using her well for what she is. We were talking about families earlier. I wonder, is her whole family invisible? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I would love to see a family portrait of just like a bunch of clothing floating. Yes. Like there's some tie in glasses and there's like some lipstick just floating and mm-hmm. it'd be great. Next on our list is Bakugo. Yes, Katsuki Bakugo. Mr. Murder Explosion himself. Ooh, ooh. He is another person that could just be a whole podcast episode. Yeah, a lot of issues. His mother is interesting. You learn a lot when you meet his mother. She is just like him, except she is his mother, so hmm. she's in charge. His power is his sweat is a nitroglycerin-like substance, which sounds boring. As originally underwhelmed, he makes explosions. Oh, he's going to be overshadowed quickly. Explosions are the kind of thing like, oh, that's powerful now. But once everyone else starts to grow, an explosion can only grow so far. Mm-hmm. But he's done things to impress me. His um, AP shot, his armor-piercing shot, he has, like, a shotgun move. He has, like, um his gauntlets, which are very interesting. The first time you see him hand his gauntlet to someone else and have them use it, I think it's during the midterm with Midoriya. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. His pride is stupid. <laughs> like, he's not prideful to a fault. Like, he's prideful, like, for the sake of having an overly prideful character. He won the exam. the, the um, I'm sorry, the sports festival. And he's chained down and muzzled, and they give him the thing. He's like, no, I want a real fight. This is stupid. And it reminds me a ton of Endeavor. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. Once um, All Might loses his powers and is no longer a hero, Endeavor becomes number one. Mm-hmm. And you see um, Todoroki walk by and look into the room and see him sitting on the floor, Endeavor. Everything around him is destroyed and on fire. And he's like, no, not like this. He wanted to be number one by being the best, not by default. And that is so much like Bakugo. I see Bakugo following in Endeavor's footsteps. I could totally see that too. Also, like, even though they already kind of handled this, like, slightly, I could totally see him taking on a more villain role later on. Maybe not villain, but, like, anti-hero. Like, Like, uh, definitely not with the League of Villains, but just like, oh, you're gonna be All Might's disciple? Well, fine then. I'll just fuck shit up. I can't wait to see what happens when Bakugo inevitably finds out when Midoriya got his powers. I mean, it's pretty much to be assumed that he knows. He kind of knows, but like, oh, you have all for one. You are the next All Might. He's pretty smart, but like, the moment of confrontation when he says, Mm -hmm. hey, I know who you are. I can't be better than All Might anymore. Mm -hmm. Which means I'm going to be better than you. And and it, it it makes me even, like, sad even for him because... I think some people tend to forget that All Might, like, Bakugo looked up to him just as much as Midoriya did. Mm. And now he's, like, unable to fit into those footsteps. With the loss of All Might, there's a lot of big holes. A lot of characters' development is based solely off of All Might. And everyone wants to be better than All Might. Todoroki was raised to be better than All Might. Midoriya is, like, All Might's disciple. Bakugo wants to be number one, which means he wants to be better than All Might. So many things about All Might... And now that he's gone, there's this weird, like, void. Not the cool void full of podcasts, but a <laughs> void of emptiness. I'm worried for the moment where word gets out in the public that Midoriya's his, like, next in line person. I'm just waiting for the secret to come out. It's gonna come out mm-hmm. eventually. Oh, yeah. I'm just waiting for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, next, um, Izuku Midoriya. Oh, hey, speaking, speaking of. Speaking of Midoriya, like, this is an interesting character. A super strength, my least favorite power. It's boring, you hit things, you hit things harder. The way My Hero Academia, Baku no Hero, approaches this is beautiful. With the all for one, with the way that he has to give up something. He breaks his arm, he breaks his finger, sometimes three times in one fight. There's a dedication there. I've broken myself. I've had broken finger, broken shoulder. The most painful experience of my life was being moved from a hospital bed to a gurney with a broken shoulder. Midoriya not only did that, he broke his arm, like, twice in one fight, like, double broke it, and then still used it to, like, pull himself off the ground. Like, Mm -hmm. how? How? Like, I understand Adrenaline Rush, but still... The amount of resolve that takes is far more than... That's his real quirk, okay? (laughs) But he's interesting. I love how, like, he was the strongest thing. But at a strong cost. Oh, yeah. And now as that cost is going down, he's becoming less interesting to me. I think with the added 
like kind of twist of like oh instead of spoilers. punching things yeah spoilers guys instead of actually punching things using his legs i think that's a nice little twist they added to that that new development is what is still keeping him interesting for me but once he masters the leg thing like hey guys i'm the next all Might. at me bro there was something else i wanted to say oh yeah just a uh, side thing about one for all in general like so the power of all for one gets like greater and greater the further it's passed down eventually there's going to be a point where just like power itself is going to be too too much just for like a human body in general no matter how much you train we kind of see that with midoriya but then again he was a weakling to begin with so here's my question mr all might himself he was the greatest hero of all time. He took all for one to a new height. It grows with you. I feel like he grew it considerably. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, because he had no issue taking it, he could use it instantly. Um, Deku, Midoriya, whatever you want to call him. He struggled immensely with it. Is it because All Might made it too much? And then how will they train the next person? At some point, someone with a quirk is going to have to get it just so they can survive having it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, like... They're going to have to give it to someone with a pretty strong quirk. So here's a thought I have about this all for one. Deku dies. Does all for one die with him? Um, I mean, if he passes it down to someone. But, like, if he dies before he can pass it on. Does he just all that for nothing? Was it nine people who's mm -hmm. the ninth one to have it? No, he's... I think he's Is either eight? the seventh or the eighth. Regardless, all of that... X amount of lives, seven or eight lives, wasted growing this to beat all for one. Who is he defeated yet? It looked like he might have been defeated. I, I think he's just kind of pushed aside out of commission for now. I agree completely, but I think it's really odd that, like, okay, threat's gone. I feel like All Might would have been more thorough with it. Like, he's done this before, and he somehow lived. Hit him again. You don't have any powers. Hey, Endeavor, just blast this whole area. Like, <laughs> this has happened before. And all for one is terrible, man. Like, it's terrifying. Yeah, well, that, that's my thoughts on Midoriya. I love this costume, though. Oh, yeah, me too. Like, especially after they fixed it. Because mm -hmm. I did not like those bunny ears. Yeah, those were... When the hood was down, it was great. What, what I was going to add, though, was that, like, technically, could they still, like, just steal his DNA after he dies? No. Oh, wait, no. They addressed this. Yeah, that's right. It has to be given willingly. Unless he leaves it in his will, maybe? Maybe. I don't know if there's anyone he would leave it to at this point. Um, I saw some theories. I don't really know, like, why it would go in this direction. I don't know if I should say it out loud. Should I keep it in the dark? Maybe in the dark for now. For now. You have to go to work soon. Yeah, I do. Although I do like the theory that this whole show is just future Midoriya talking to the next... One for all. Oh, telling the story? Yeah. I love that. Because the opening is, this is how I became the world's greatest hero. Which, first of all, immediately gives away, Midoriya's going to do it. He's not going to die. He's not going to fail. He became the world's greatest hero. That's like the first word in the anime. So, next on our list. <laughs> Minoro Minata. Minata. Minono. Banana. Madara. <laughs> first time I heard his name, he introduced himself. I, I, did you say his name was Banana? <laughs> I mean... He is extremely interesting to me. He bothers me so much. He's a huge pervert. His power seems next to useless, full of utility, but not for actual hero stuff. But he is yet to fail. Everything he's done, he succeeded in. Except maybe the sports festival, but he didn't really try that hard. This is what makes me not like him as a character. Because he's been confirmed as the author's like stand-in kind of person. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, of course he's going to succeed in everything because he's the author and he wants to... No one's going to, like, make themselves look like shit. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that he pervs on all the girl characters makes me uncomfortable. It's weird that the author would base him off of him and then openly say, hey, pervert. I mean, look at the designs of the girl characters. They look like anime designs to me. Especially Momo. Poor Momo. Let's talk about Momo. Did we talk about Momo? She's last. She's Let's last. talk about Momo next. Yeah. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to say about Minata. Mm. His costume was interesting. I thought he was wearing a diaper. Then Dimitri was like, oh no, it's like a bowl of grapes because his hair and it's a bowl. I thought he had a diaper. He's some kind of like purple baby. 
I mean, I do agree. It does look like a diaper. And to be honest, it kind of makes sense with the whole pervy aspect. And also, he's just kind of a baby. Yeah. But he's always enough. He rises to the situation and just to the situation. During the midterm, was it Lady Midnight? What's her name? Um, I think it is Midnight. Something Midnight. It's just Midnight? Just Midnight, yeah. Um, he is yelling at Tape Guy, who's unconscious currently, because Midnight. Why do you have to do that? No, I have to actually work and do things. And there's this underlying idea, like, he always has a plan. He can always do it. But he doesn't want to. It's effort. The only reason he wants to be a hero is just so he, like, girls would like him. During the USJ, his plan was to wait for the heroes to come and do it for him. He's horrible. I want him to be developed to justify his character. Also, I don't really like how they don't really, like, reprimand him. Like, yes, yes, they do, like fight back like with sue like she always hits him but they don't really be like oh all this sexual harassment you're suspended like the characters themselves like the students like yell at him and like oh you pervert teachers don't do anything about it and i kind of wish they did that's all i have to say about him next is momo what's this last name <laughs> yo your zoo sure Sure, that's how we're doing it. Her power is, I think it's just creation. Creation, yeah. She transforms the lipids, lipid proteins in her body into stuff. Mm-hmm. She is a powerhouse. She can just make things long she knows what they're made out of. But she has to eat. Like, she needs that protein in her body to create things. Mm-hmm. So, like, put her at a China buffet, she can go all day. Oh, yeah. We talked about her costume. It's kind of revealing. It's upsetting me. They make the argument that... Oh, yeah, because I make things out of my skin. My skin needs to be revealed so things come out. But during the USJ attack, she makes a giant blanket that comes out of her back, the only part that is covered. So, I don't know. I think it's just a cop-out, so the author can just draw her being naked. Ah. Um, she's rich. She is filthy rich. (laughs) And I love it. You see her room, and she tries to fit this huge bed into her room, and it's like a third of- two-thirds of the room Mm -hmm. full of bed. Oh, you don't all have mansions? Oh, I'm sorry. Use my mansion. She's so nice. She's like a nice bitch. She's like Weiss in Ruby if she was less of an asshole. Yeah, I mean, Weiss in Ruby. Yeah, yeah, I get it. During the midterm, she was making Russian nesting dolls with flash grenades inside (laughs) of them. That's crazy to me to think that she had that foresight to do that that whole time. She always has a plan. She's very smart, but she gets panicked and like... She doubts herself at that point. She can't focus. During the um, the sports festival, she fought. She was the first round with Birdman. And she was like, okay, I need to make a plan. I'll make my shield. Okay, now what? I need to get away from his shadow. Maybe make some kind of light. Okay, I'm out of the ring. I lost. She has... She's the woman with the plans. We have to get her to the point where she can make the plan efficiently. (laughs) Mm -hmm. She is going to grow into something great. Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel like... Of, like, the mainstream heroes you're introduced to at the beginning. Mm-hmm. There's, like, Construction Guy, Mount Lady, Karaoke Wood. Ka- Kamui Woods. Kamui Woods. A lot of Class 1A straight up currently outclasses all of them. So I'm curious to see how that goes as they grow and straight up replace these people. Oh, yeah, definitely. The only person I can think of that I think wouldn't be replaced, um, I forget his name, but his quirk is Origami, and he could basically make himself paper Oh, that guy, yeah. Yeah. There's a few people. Um, Woods guy, his quirk is useful for capturing and detaining. Best genist. Man, (laughs) I love his power. Me too. He is fabulous. Denim is so prevalent. Not in superhero costumes, but this, like, great. He's great, man. Love him. Spoilers, but the question is, is he still alive? (laughs) I think he's gonna live. I don't know. He was beat pretty to shit. Who have they killed so far? So far, they killed... Um, they, they did kill people. Hold on. Um, Water Hose, the firefighter parents, but not in the anime. Yeah, not in that the anime. That was before it started. I'm trying to remember if they killed Ragdoll or if she's just passed out. We haven't been told exactly. He took her quirk, mm-hmm. and there's this idea that's kind of hinted at but not confirmed yet, that if gaining and losing quirks is a lot for the body... And I think she's, like, lobotomized now that she took her quirk away. Which makes me sad, because she was my favorite out she of the Pussycats. Really? Not um, Tony the Tiger? <laughs> I mean, he's great, too. The Pussycats are pretty awesome. As introduced, I'm like, really? And they're like, oh, yeah, I see it. 
Cool. <laughs> awesome. I love these guys. Um, yeah. So that's all the classes. Students of class A, rather. Plus some little bonus snippets about the actual heroes. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait um, to see more about Class B. I really hope they get their little spot uh, in the spotlight. I want them to have their spot. However, I do not want a spin-off anime about Class B. That would be too much. Like a Soul Eater Not deal. Oh, yeah. I can see where you're going. So, Dimitri, if you had to pick a quirk for yourself, what would you pick? Uh, A quirk for myself. Um... (laughs) So I've thought about this in the past, and I feel bad. I feel bad, because I don't mean to, like, always go in this direction, but literally just, like, Danny Phantom. Interesting. How would you list that quirk? Would you call it Phantom? Yeah, totally, totally. Call it Going Ghost? Um, Going Ghost would be, probably be the name of a special move. It's weird. So that's a lot of abilities in one quirk. Maybe is... not every ability, but like intangibility. There's someone who can do that. We meet someone who does that. Dur- we don't, I don't know their name. During the hero exam, one of the randos who shows up for five minutes. There's beams, like belly button laser guy, where I don't know if anyone else shoots beams of any sort. Ghostly whale, present mic. Um, ice powers, Todoroki. Plant powers, girl flip, vine hair. Mm, makes sense. But I like that. Um, if I had to pick a quirk, I thought about this, and I love the idea of the power to switch places with someone. Ooh, yeah. That could be interesting and fun. Mm-hmm. In rescue settings, in combat settings, there's a lot of times where, like, you switch places with someone or something. More anime is talking about Naruto, Minato's teleportation. I've always loved that. He had this kunai he would throw and teleport to them. Mm-hmm. Something along that range. But that's just powerful. Just teleporting. Yeah. Kind of like Portal Dude. Mm-hmm. But the idea of switching places with someone, that's interesting. That's juicy. You can do things with that. You have to make a choice. I could switch places with a civilian so they don't get shot. But then I'm taking the bullet. It's one of those um, gunhead powers where it's like you're just kind of an average Joe except for this situation. Mm, definitely. Did I say gunhead? I meant to say um, eraserhead. Oh. <laughs> eraserhead powers. Where he will never be the best. Straight out. His power is great. It's wonderful. It's situational. Same kind of thing. I would never be an All Might, but I would always be useful and prevalent. It's yeah. the power I would love to have. Yeah, that's pretty good. Way better than my mine. No, no, your five powers are great, Dimitri. <laughs> Duplicates are something we've yet to see, except for the Tetsu Tetsu. But still, they have different names, which is the same power. So I don't know. Anything else you would like to add to this podcast, uh, Dimitri? I know you have to get leaving pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think we should end that there. All right. Yeah, we could talk if if there's anything else we'd want to talk about, we could definitely do that in other episodes. Or we could just add it to the end of this one. Like we have to record it all in one sitting. Yeah, true. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to this. It was a pleasure to have you on. It was a pleasure to be here. This was fun. I love fangirling about anime with you. Me too. I love just like discussing like different potentials, different like just quirks in general. Quirks are the most interesting part of Boku no Hero. I love that it's a quirk and not a power. A power is a straight-up advantage. It's a boom. A quirk is a quirk. It's quirky. I just said the same thing three times. It's not always a power. It's random. In the beginning, they say not all men are created equal. And that's great. It creates interest. I love the idea of that underdog coming up, the Midoriya, overcoming his weakness of destroying himself when he uses his power. The less interesting powers overpowering the really cool overpowered ones. Mm. On that note, how the fuck do I usually end this? Oh, uh, where can people find you? Oh, I am on YouTube. I am the Cup of Fun. It's Cup of Fun. It's one (laughs) word. And I I do gaming stuff, lately playing Dungeons & Dragons with Spacey Ghost here. Also, some other things that shouldn't mention because they're not happening yet. I mean, at this point, I think it would be my turn DMing. So if y'all want to see me DM something, head over there. Yeah, I DM the first five, four episodes. Dimitri is doing the next chunk. How long his section is going to be? I have no idea, but we'll have to see. Um, you can find me, Spacey Ghost, at Spacey Ghost, pretty much everywhere. I I'm streaming Danganronpa right now, and I'm crying horribly. Things get real quick. They killed my waifu, and I'm still upset about that. Shh, shh it's okay. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see y'all sometime in the next one. Till then, have a great life. Bye. He's actually waving at the microphone right now. Yes. (laughs) I care that much. Mm
My weakness is I care too much. <laughs> My weakness is love. <laughs>